Did I give someone permission to touch me? Did I give someone permission to do that to me? No, I didn't. And also, I'm a child, so I don't understand what is happening to me until I'm an adult and I reflect. Samantha Morton is an actor who has been nominated for two Oscars, starred in Minority Report with Tom Cruise, and won a BAFTA for The Unloved, her directorial debut. Following the revelations of child sex abuse in Rotherham, she felt the need to go public about her own shocking experience growing up in care homes in Nottingham. In between the ages of three and 11, was that when you were kind of being moved from foster yeah, care different foster to... Head. Back to my dad, back into foster care, back to my dad. Your dad was violent, wasn't he? Um, yeah, yeah, he was. Your mum, was she, she couldn't cope, was she, was she ill? My mum um, didn't get custody of us when we were little, when my parents separated. She didn't have a house, and in those days, you know, the person with the house, maybe he, my dad got custody because he had somewhere to live. My understanding of the reasons why we were in and out of care were to do with my uh, family's inability to cope. Um, ab abuse, violence, um, alcohol abuse, uh, drug abuse, depression. What was the name of the home? The, the first home I was at was called Red Tiles. Actually, I have incredibly fond memories of this particular home, of the children, some of the kids I lived with, um, and some of the staff members, and it felt, it was a small unit. But you weren't abused there? I was abused there, yeah. Sexually abused? Yes, though. I was, yeah. Was that by members of staff? Yes. And was that the first time you'd been sexually abused? No, by it wasn't. Of... Oh, but sorry, by members of staff? Yeah, I'd been abused by other people before then. And maybe that's what makes those children vulnerable, huh? Maybe that's, that's what makes you the one that they go after. Maybe, I don't know. And it was members of staff? Yes. Yeah. Abusing them. Residential social workers, yeah. There was and also what, another what home I was at where... What level of abuse are you... What are you talking about? What it's what the word, I think that... Um, the word level is a funny one because it's what's relevant and what, what, how it affects you for the rest yeah. of your life. Um, I think I was um, quite used to certain sexual things happening in that home anyway because a lot of the staff members, the residential staff members, were quite young. So some of them might be 19 years old, young men looking after girls of 17, 16, 14, 13, you know. However, something can happen to one person that might be not very high a grade, but can literally destroy them for the rest of their lives. And so it is, and it is what, what is deemed ac acceptable to the individual. Did I give someone permission to touch me? Did I give someone permission to do that to me? No, I didn't. And also, I'm a child, so I don't understand what is happening to me until I'm an adult and I reflect. Or you know it's wrong and you go to someone and say, or you think you're to blame because you've become close to that person and they're your spe you're their special girl or, you know, and you feel privileged. You're the one that gets the, to get to stay up a bit later to watch the film or you're the one that gets the, the extra portion of food or you're the one that gets the trip into town. Or, and you know. did you know it was sexual abuse when you were 11, 12, 13? Yeah, I, can, I knew then. I knew what, what, what was happening wasn't And cool. how was it presented to you by the people who were abusing? That's, that's a more detailed in, in thing about what actually happened at the time. And I don't, I, just, I don't want to talk about the actual thing that happened or things that happened. But um, it's, if, if you think about this, you have children living with, living with the abusers, really, because these people are feeding you, cook it, you know, they're cooking for you, they're monitoring the home, they're staff sleeping in, there's a staff sleeping in room next to your bedroom, there's all sorts of opportunities for people to violate you or hurt you or harm you or, or there's, it's not, you don't really have any, the same rights as an individual living at home with their parents. And when you complained about being sexually abused mm -hmm. to social workers, did they seem to be listening? Did they respond? Not that I remember. No, no support, no, no offer of counselling, no offer you... of... Or even wanting to delve deeper. I think my wanting to talk about it was thinking that something would happen because of that information. And nothing would happen. 
there wasn't like, a, oh, we're going to deal with this, or we're going to do something about this, or make sure this person can't do it to anybody else. When you went to the police, what did you expect to happen, and what did actually happen? My hope at the time was I just wanted it to stop. So I didn't want it to happen to me or anyone else anymore. And I knew that what was happening was wrong. Um, and I, I didn't want to... You see, I'd already told my social worker and nothing had happened. So I didn't want... I remember not wanting to go to the police. So I didn't want them to get into trouble. You know, I made a formal complaint and then I was moved. And I think those staff members were some downgraded, but they were allowed to stay in the home. Was there an investigation? Not that I'm aware of. As in, I was never talked to about it by anybody other than and it was never really talked about. So I was just moved. That night? That night, yeah. I didn't get to go back and get my stuff and say goodbye to people. And did you ever think when you go to the police, I might be removed from the home? No, not at all. No, that didn't. That was like the rug being pulled underneath me. That was not in my mindset. Maybe had I known that, I wouldn't have come forward anyway. So did you feel you were being punished? Yeah, major, massively, majorly, that I'd betrayed that place and those people that I loved and some of the people that loved me. People were furious at me, for, you know, that there'd been any accusations or anything furious. Did you feel you'd been believed? Yeah, I knew I'd been believed by various other staff members. It wasn't just me that was happening to. I had one friend who, she's, I mean, now in a, I say friend, uh, she set fire to herself in the street and she's now in a mental home. So, Jesus. do you believe me? Do you believe me? Do you believe me? They'd say. To who? To, to the staff, to other people. After you went to the police with your mum. Yeah. And they just moved you to yeah. the other place. Yeah, which was horrific. It's the worst choice. It doesn't exist anymore, but it's the worst. It was. I wouldn't, it was horrific there. And how long were you there? I ran away, I just wasn't there for very long. I was legally there for, I think, about a year, but I, I was never there. And um, were you abused there? N not sexually abused, no. But physically, vi violence towards me, yeah. I was once punched in the face by a residential, um, a very young male residential social worker, because I said, I told him to F off. <laughs> how old were you? I was 14. What, a fully-fledged punch? Fully-fledged punch by a man in the face. Jesus. You know, but I, I was cheeky. I was being incredibly cheeky, so that's what I got. From your experience of being in care in Nottingham, was sex abuse widespread? I think yes. I, I, I can't believe that there wouldn't be. So it wasn't one bad apple, which is no. the, the thing we always hear. If the people that are investigating the residential social workers are their colleagues, and I tell you this for now, it goes high up because a lot of people that abused my friends were people in very, very top jobs within the social services. And you're saying it's protected right up the rank? Yes, it was. I believe there's institutional prejudice for looked after young people within the police forces across the country institutional prejudice it just goes deep 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 rooted for all of my life if someone at the top is also dodgy <laughs> you know they're at the top how can you get how can you it comes down doesn't it so if it's any kind of corruption and if it's from the top then it comes down so that's that was my belief that why certain things didn't change at red tiles at that time do you feel traumatised by what you've been through in childhood now? Occasionally, yeah. You know, I wouldn't say that I live in a constant state of illness, but I do think that there are certainly, to me, when you are abused, sexually abused, it is a life sentence. It stays with you forever, or physically abused, it does stay with you forever. But then you can heal, you can find ways to love yourself, to, to be a a valid member of society, to give back, um, to try and help other people. Um, trauma's a funny one because it's like grief. You can be fine four or five years, then oh, can come back and hit you like it happened the day before. So, 
I mean, we've heard for the last few weeks, we've heard about Rotherham, we heard about Rochdale before, we've heard about Derby. Do you think there are Rochdales and Rotherhams and Derbys all over the place? Was Nottingham a Rochdale? Sex abuse is, is, happens all over, in every kind of echelon of society, it's there. But I do think that the kind of abuse we're talking about um, is about poverty and vulnerability. I'm not just saying that these kids in care are the ones. It is, it's the forgotten children. It's the forgotten children of the forgotten people. And there is so many forgotten people in this country. And it's a, it's a trickle-down effect, isn't it, of, of everything. And then those children who are being abused don't... They maybe don't have the confidence or the strength at the time when they're being abused to report it for all sorts of reasons. If it's gang-related, there's fear of reprisals. Um, or what's considered norm. It's how things are manipulated and children are still growing, their brains are still growing, so they're manipulated into thinking that it's normal. Grooming happens in all sorts of different ways. Um, and I think that, to me, what I saw in children's homes in Not Nottingham, now my mind absolutely boggles with, with what was considered acceptable and not challenged or changed.